Good morning, everybody. Good morning to a beautiful day. It's a Saturday. And the guys are getting here to get work started right now. Yeah, I've been down once this morning already. Put water and all in for my baby chicks. And ready to get my day started right along with these guys. So I'm wanting to get this boat moved and I haven't painted the white yet because I couldn't tape it because I need to let this blue cure more. I decided I'm just going to paint the white out at the beach once we get the boat moved because if I paint the white on there this morning, that means I'm going to have to let it dry all day. Tomorrow the guys are off work, so it would end up being Monday before I could get the boat moved. And I'm ready to move it right here. So it would be no problem. Sit out there and enjoy. The first thing they're going to do this morning is do this little pour right here.
Well, there's the bracket right there. It looks pretty good, all welded up. And I think that'll pass pretty good right there. So I'm just going to either use a bunch of these washers that I have to make spacer right here for this bracket and this bolt hole. I just barely have it started on the first couple of threads right now. But I did check it down in there for interference. The hole is really deep. So I should be able to run it down in there pretty good. And I think I need to put just a few more spacers to get it out. So that'll take up more of the length of the bolt. I think I'm putting maybe three, maybe three more washers on there. And that should space it pretty good. And I'll put one on the outside right here as well. It all worked out great. Now I have good clearance. This wiring and the shift cable, I'm going to have to get them uh, tied over out of the way. But I'm definitely clearing the stringer here now. And maybe down in there I have about a half inch clearance in there now, which is what I like. Uh, plenty of room to tighten the belt. There's no issue on that. It's still way down. So there is a lot of movement here. Let's see if I can get my hand in here. Yep, so there, it's got a lot of movement right there. Since I got the power steering pump in place, um, move on to another project until I can get the pulley to go there on the front. I'll have to do a little scavenging for that. And... Um, made a couple trips with some jerry cans here and I have the diesel tank 100% full. We set up a little cover here over the boat where I can work on it, but I don't want my tarpaulin to tear right here at these spots. So I'm asking them to get some socks and put over that. <clears throat> you might see these old outrigger setting on here, but I'm only setting them up here to look at them and take some measurements of the height that they set off the boat before so i want them all back cradled in in their previous place and uh i get the boat leveled up i'm gonna pull a couple lines and i'm gonna take some like say some measurements off the height that they were at before this boat always ever since we've owned it even when it had the diesel down in the middle of it, you know, the little inboard, it always rode high in the front, and we were always stacking a ballast up here in the front. Probably going to have to do it again. Right in here, I'm wanting to divide this. I want to put a solid piece of wood in right here because I want real bulkheads. If we was to strike and knock a hole in the front, well, then only the front can flood. And then right back here, I want to put in another full bulkhead. Same thing. So if struck something right here on either side in this part of the boat, it can only get, you know, a few inches of water in it right there in that section only without flooding the entire boat. And uh, I think there might be one more section in the very rear back here I want to do with just the same. So I want to look at that. Um, I kind of wouldn't mind having this thing closed all the way back here. I might change this. I don't know if I'll do it immediately, but I might change this. And uh, put put a door down in here. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see when I do this. So I'm in some talks with some companies that make diesel outboards. Now we're not talking about these high dollar ones like Cox and Ox. That's the two really expensive brands out there right now. There is some other companies um, that make them also. They even have a long, long history of making diesel outboards way before those Ox and Cox became so popular in the u.s and some other places and those things are high dollar they are ridiculous on the prices and i'm just not that big a fool with my money but <clears throat> these uh, these are made out of china i'll just tell you the truth the ones i'm looking at are made out of china and uh, not everything out of china is total junk in fact most of your yamahas and suzukis and everything are all built out of China now you know it's kind of like they got the A line the B line the C line and uh, 
there's several different companies and some of them I don't know I'd be a little bit more nervous of and there's a couple companies that seem to be pretty legit and pretty proud of their work and they're expanding their factories even more and um, one of the companies has even made a deal with one of the big popular US brands that you're probably going to be thinking you're paying for this high dollar I'm not going to say it's brand I might have already said it in this video but they've made deals with them price a little rebranding going on and you're going to pay maybe 14 15 times the price for uh for something that you think is not a chinese product but it is so the reason i'm telling this story is is that i don't want to carry a gas kicker engine a backup motor on here because then i have to carry the fuel cell for it up here above deck you're not allowed to carry a fuel cell like that below deck now if the US Coast Guard may rule saying that you can't carry that fuel cell below deck with an inboard and if um, the Philippine Marina law which is equal to like the US Coast Guard law also states you cannot take a fuel cell and put it down in a closed area unless it's a permanent built-in tank with an exterior filler and with the exterior vent, I'm trying to remember where the vent is on this boat. It's up here somewhere. I think it's to maybe the inside, but exterior vent as well. They don't have an exterior vent, and it doesn't have um, an exterior fill and permanently strapped in and meet all these requirements and stuff that approves it as a inboard tank. It can't be there. And the whole thing is I didn't want gas to start with. I want diesel. So... One of the things too by carrying a kicker motor is I can put a secondary supply line and be able to supply my kicker motor off the same fuel cell in the boat, the onboard tank, um, as the main engine. So that means I could take this motor and put it permanently over onto my little bonka boat out there and use it without doing this switching back and forth stuff. And it may pick up just a little bit of weight on me. Um, I'll be okay with that though. I'm gonna have, um, I centered my batteries down in the back. So let's talk about that just for a minute. So when I switched from the gas V8 and those huge, huge exhaust manifolds, which are, you know, not heat exchangers as well, uh, water cooled exhaust manifolds. Um, man, those things are heavy, and all the hardware with them is heavy. The engine itself is massively heavy. And I went to this four-cylinder diesel, which has this aluminum head on it. It's lightweight. It does not have near the weight. So a friend of mine and myself, we sat and we did the calculations before, and it came out it was 400 pounds lighter with this diesel. 400 pounds lighter. That's 400 pounds less you gotta push. And also with that, um, we then decided to look up and we did a little research online and we found an article where someone else had done it already and what did they come up with? Their, their estimation was like 420 pounds lighter on their estimation. So we know we're right there in the ballpark on our figures. So it allows me room to do things like put this little backup outboard on um, there's other things that I have stripped from the boat too and took weight away I've actually been minusing the weight on this boat not adding now when they design it they design the boat for a certain amount of weight of how deep it's going to set and draw a draft right and if you get it up too high it'll get unstable and rocky and what I mean too high is if you put a really light motor in it and it doesn't have any of that weight that it was designed for now the boat's going to set higher in the water and on this shape hull it's going to bring it up out of its stability and it's going to get this teetering that will go on so you do want a little weight back in there thus i have the room to play with to have like this outboard on here um and uh things like putting that power inverter inside that i've been doing and all and I still have a lot more room to play even from there. Then the boat is designed to carry a certain amount of people and I will not be carrying that amount of people. I do not want to turn this into like a party barge. It's not gonna happen. Um, 
uh, the most I'd ever imagine anybody going would be four. Most time I just wanted two or three. Honestly, most time I just wanted two. <laughs> and I'm okay with one even. So uh, that's the story with that. And uh, I'll let you know how things go.